Um, it's going to take a little time. You know, you come on. We have other people still just starting to come on. They're coming off the Millionaire Mindset call, amongst other things. So um, no rush. We'll get started in the next few minutes or so. And I um, hope you like my glasses, like my hat, my little setup right here. Ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'll be back in uh, a little bit. You know, while we're waiting for um, others to log in, I, I do want to start looking at the um, U.S. stock market. Here's, uh, actually, we can look at indexes. I think that'll be fine. S&P 500. And we can look at these, um, it's got monthly charts. Let's look at some weekly charts. What do you think? You know, the market has been in this um, uptrend that's been going on for, gosh, about a, 10 years. And um, now we're starting to see the uh, U.S. market starting to roll over. And I've been talking about this every time I do my session now because the downside potential is pretty great. So we're looking at the last time the market uh, was down here was in 2016. And you had a nice uptrend, and now we're starting to uh, roll over. And again, I've been talking about this, and we just got to be real aware. Of those of you who have um, investments, you don't want to start looking at protecting yourself. Let's just look at um, some of these other markets, the Dow. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index, DJX. Also, you see how markets failed to make new highs up here. And now we have a huge double top in place, lower high. And now we're starting to see uh, if this market can come down. So that uh, Dow, let me see, Dow, Dow, D. Where is the Dow? Oh, it's one hundredth of it. Duh. Uh, The S&P actually is the S&P 500, and the S&P represents the larger barometer of the market. See, that made a higher high where the Dow did not. Let's take a look at NASDAQ and DX. All right. And you can see this is starting to uh, roll over. Pretty much all of our U.S. stock markets are starting to kick to the downside. It's not really a cool thing. Uh, to see this. We don't want to see uh, these markets hit so far. So it's going into what we call a bear market. Uh, let's see. It's 8.05. Hey, everybody. Christopher Terry, CEO of iMarkets Live. Just talking a little bit about the markets, the stock market. And I'm glad everybody can get on. Let me just double check a little temperature. Let me just check my programmer to see how we're doing this evening. So, Sing, how we doing? How we doing? Okay, good. Okay. We have a decent amount of people. It's a holiday weekend. We're finally finishing that and getting things started. Now we're going to go into the holiday season between now and the new year. What we could expect is a lot of selling to come in place. A lot of times at the end of the year, you have this, what they call a Christmas rally. But Hold on a second. He's messaging me. Sound good? Going on. So we have um, 
what we call a Christmas rally. That happens a lot of times in the U.S. stock market, but the market's now starting to uh, turn over. I think we're going to start to see a lot of sales, as we have been, as people take the money out of the U.S. stock market um, to lock in the end of the year. They don't want to give back what they've made in the, in the markets, if you look at them. The last year has been pretty spectacular for those who have invested. Uh, so you got people that are going to take money out, buy their Christmas gifts, so on and so forth, lock in money for the year. God bless, right? But overall, I just think the stock market itself is done. I've been talking about this. I'm going to continue to talk about it. And I'm going to continue to tell you that what we're doing on the Forex side is amazing. All right. What we're doing on the crypto side is amazing. You want to stay in that trading mode. But those of you who have more money in addition to your trading account, you do want to look at your investment side and be very, very careful. Uh, you want to look at stuff that is not going to put you in trouble because right now the U.S. stock market is starting to roll over. So we're looking at a two, three, four-year decline in the market. I'm talking it's already started, all right? So that's why I have the chart up on the screen, which I'll, I'll show you more and I'll get into it. But my job here is not just to teach you how to trade. It's also to teach you how to protect yourself, how to not to, not to invest. You know, it's not really what we do, but I've been doing it for many, many years. And more and more, I'm going into cash, into cash, into cash, and lowering my risk in the overall market. You want to understand how to do this. A lot of you are very young, and you have many years ahead of you. The last thing you want to do is buy at the highs, you know, or sell at the lows. So we'll watch the U.S. stock market week to week, but I really feel, um, you know, there's some issues out there. So um, we're going to look at... Uh, the different markets tonight, the um, currency markets, which are the uh, Forex markets. And then we'll look at some crypto markets, and uh, we'll get into everything. I got some um, I, some surprises that uh, I'm excited about. I spent a few days that I'll, I'll share with you. But um, let's have some fun. So let me get rid of Christopher. There we go. So... As I was saying, and I've been uh, waiting for everybody to start coming in the first 10 minutes of the, of the hour, is let's go back to the S&P. So the S&P market uh, is the barometer for the U.S. stock market. I've been trading the futures market for many, many years, and it's a great market to trade. I'll show you that actually right now, ES. All right, I'll show you the ES market. I've been, did I just see what I saw? Let me just try that again. Okay, what's that Escorts Limited, these markets, I'm just teasing. So, anyway, right here is the futures market, all right? And the futures market, I've been trading for many, many, many years. And I suggest to start even learning about it. As you can see, the markets um, are very, very volatile, extremely volatile. And every point here for like every $500 per contract, every point is 50 bucks. So from 2626 to 2627, that's 50 bucks. So you can see where you have 27 up to 42. That's like right here, or just in a very small period of time, uh, 20 minutes, the thing runs up like 1300 bucks, you know, 600, 700 bucks. Very, very fast moving market, the S&P futures. And uh, I've been trading them for a trillion years. I love them. They're my baby. But what I always do is watch the U.S. stock market, the S&P futures, for overall barometer. You're like, what's really going on out there? You look at um, other markets. As I said, we had the uh, NASDAQ and the X. And we look at the index markets. And you can see how all the tech stocks. Let's take a look at some of the bigger ones. Apple. Apple, Apple, Apple. What is Apple. Oh, here it is. Uh, stock. Apple. Look at this thing. It's just dying. A lot of these big markets, man, they're just starting to just roll over pretty badly. All right. So listen, don't be naive to think that everything goes up and you always want to stay ahead of the curve in your personal investing don't get yourself in trouble. So 
EURUSD, let's look at some of the Forex markets. So I cannot see, if anybody's typing in there thinking they're communicating with me, or I could see it, I, I don't see any of your messages. I basically just give a straight up. Out broadcast. It makes it easy, easier for me to um, have a, a non biased opinion. So, uh, looking at the Euro USD, let's take a look at this weekly chart real quick. All right, let's just take a look at the weekly chart. And it looks like it's trying to find some support down here in this area. It looks like this whole area is trying to be. Um, of support. Okay, so yeah, okay, let me just turn that off. When the CEO messes up everything. All right, there we go. So you can see right across here is a bunch of support in here. This swing low is important. Market's trying to hold this area. And we had a little bit of what we call a divergence, a divergence pattern uh, right here. So where prices made lower lows, okay, you see that? And the oscillator has made higher lows. You can see here and here. So it looks like the market's trying to hold this general area and could possibly turn up. I don't see anything else. This is like a very, very large range. So let's kick it down to the daily chart. Let's see what we have going on. All right, let's go down to the daily chart. EURUSD. Let's look at some of these other charts in here. Four hour chart. All right, I think that gives us a better uh, idea what's happening. So what I'm liking here is, all right, you have what they call that Elliott corrective wave after your pull up. Okay, a pull. And then you have the flag, the flag pattern. So this would be that flaggish pattern in a form of a corrective ABC. You see that? And I don't know what just happened to my. There we go. So uh, the euro had a nice run up, and now we're getting that complex, what they call a complex ABC corrective wave down. And we're looking for this to, to hold and turn up. Let's take a look at uh, some Fibonacci retracements. Okay, let's look at some settings here. Let me just fix everything. We'll use Fibonacci. Hello, Fibonacci. Okay, seven eight six six one eight. Everybody good? Bang. All right. So we see the market has corrected, held a six one eight around a halfway correction. I'm liking this so far. And what I'm thinking here is, if you want to work on the buy side on the EUR USD in this range where it is down here, there is nothing wrong with that. Okay. Nothing wrong with that if you want to take a little bit of a buy side. This should continue to hold and turn up. I would keep a, a very safe risk under the um, 618 level. I wouldn't have it too too big of a risk. I would keep it up here like maybe 1.129 area. All right, something there it should be safe. You don't want the market past the 618 retracement from low to high down. Um, I had been asked earlier, do these recessions get recorded? And yes, they're recorded. When the sessions are over, you can replay it. So if you're not following right now, uh, or you, you kind of feel like you're lost or behind, don't worry about it. When the session finishes, just rewatch it, that's all. But right now, the market had a nice corrective wave ABC down. It's holding on these higher time frames. And now you start looking at some of these, a little bit of a lower time frame to get entries into. Uh, okay, here we go. Kind of dead on a Friday, on a Sunday night. So, I would 
definitely, definitely consider seeing how this holds. I would wait a couple more hours. I know we have the London session coming later on. So maybe keep an eye out when the London session comes. I don't expect anything to happen until then. We're coming off a holiday weekend. See how the London session works. If the market starts to pop, give you some support down here. It's confirming. Then work your buy side. All right. I wouldn't do it right now, obviously. It's, it's, you're coming off a major holiday weekend in the U.S. So um, just keep that in mind. GBP, USD. A, B, C, one, two, three, bing, bing, boom, bum, ba, da, ba, ba, boom. Okay. Um, let's see, where are we? Weekly chart. It's me with my playing around with stuff. Okay, GBP, USD. I don't really see too much here. I think tonight's going to be one of those nights where we got like a lot of noise uh, since it's been a holiday market and I'm telling each and every one of you from now until the new year trade smaller nickel dime the market don't put much risk in the market don't over trade the market all right uh, where are you where are my people there you go so, before we go further, over the next several weeks, we have, the, we have the last month of the year. So, bigger traders, institutional traders, banks, all the big players, they're not going to be over trading right now. What their game is, is they've made their money for the year, and their goal is to keep it. All right? It's not to give it away. So, what that means when the bigger institution, what I mean by banks, insurance companies, I'm not sure if you know this, uh, insurance companies, Aflac, Prudential, all those big companies, State Farm, they all take major office spaces all over the, the globe and traders trade from there. They trade the insurance company's money, they trade the bank's money, they trade hedge, fund, hedge funds money. So knowing this, they're not eager to risk what they've made because the traders make money, how do they make money? They make money on bonuses. So when you're trading for a bank and you've made the bank $300 million, you don't want to give that money back because your bonus is connected to it. So keep that in mind. So that being said, when the banks slow down, when the institutions slow down, when the big money, what they call the smart money, slows down, that's where the little guys like you and me, and I'm talking, I don't care how big I am, I'm a little guy, right? We're all little guys compared to the banks. We don't have the billions. Well, when they're not there, there's no liquidity. And the markets chop around, chop around. And this is the time, that last month of the year, where most people get killed. Like they lose their butts because they try to overtrade. Same thing in the summer, July 4th, August, tough months. So there's a time to be in the market. There's a time to be out of the market. There's a time to know when to commit. So when, uh, for instance, I, I live in Las Vegas, um, most of the time, and I'll go to the casino. Now, I know when to bet heavy, but I know when to bet small. It's the same with the markets. I know when to bet heavy. I know when to bet small. So if I'm playing this market in December, I'm betting small, and I'm not betting a lot. So you don't want to be in there getting chopped up, chopped up, chopped up. Don't do it. You should have done already in 11 months or 10 10, 11 months, not to worry about the last month. You're a trader. You could be able to take the month off. And honestly, if you're not confident about your trading, seriously, just stand aside and, and get on demo or practice or doodle. Whatever it's you got to do, don't lose money. All right? Uh, the main thing about trading is knowing when not to be in the market and knowing when to walk away. When to take your mouse, right? You take the mouse. Walk away, drop the mouse. Walk away from the mouse. Seriously. Um, I'm not saying stop trading for those that are successful, but those who don't have the experience, slow it down. All right, fair enough? We're on the same page? Good. Look, I'm your coach. I'm the CEO, but I'm also your coach. I'm also your friend. Um, I'm not going to get late. You get hurt. All right, so just follow what I'm saying and uh, stay out of trouble. 
Let's get Christopher off the screen. He ugly. Christopher ugly. So, so right now, I would not know what to do with this GBP USD. I won't even go near it. AUD USD. Let's see. And I'm not doing any traveling over the next uh, weeks, so I'll be here every Sunday night. I've had a heavy schedule, man. I've been in Dubai. I've been in Utah. I've been in California. I've been in New York, Florida, you name it. I've been all over the place. So what do we have here? We have the Australian dollar um, USD, the AU, daily chart. Again, it looks like all this other stuff. Let's see what we got on the smaller time frame. I mean, I could see where this market wants to go up. I don't see any particular play. I, I really, honestly, I see one big giant range where the market's just going to chop around in on the AUD USD. I'd rather not touch that. And don't think like when I come in here, Chris is going to find those trades. You know, I'm looking at the market just like you look at it, and I'm hoping something's going to um, CADUSD. Let me just see. Forex. Okay. USCCAD. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. I know we had looked at this um, several weeks ago where we were looking at this move down on the weekly chart and expecting it to come up. So I know we were looking at this for a multi-week play uh, back when the market was here. It was holding, and I know we were looking for this to go up. I'm not expecting anybody to had taken the trade or to be in it. And I know sometimes when people call trades, they'll do it at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and then three days later, tell everybody uh, their analysis. I, I don't play that game, so... I want you guys to uh, we'll just keep it transparent. Uh, right now, uh, the USD CAD, I think, I don't know what to think here, guys and girls. I think we stay out of trouble. That's what I think. My uh, mentor, Linda Bradford Rash, used to say to me, stay out of a dead sideways market. And um, I never understood what that meant until I lost money. Where you get into a market and you're thinking, you know, it can go up from here. And you get in and it just crashes. So when a market's dead sideways where there's nothing going on, you really want to play defensive and sit back and wait and let what they call the market tip its hand. Uh, when, you're looking, when you're looking at um, a market or any kind of uh, a sports event, you want to see that tip its hand and say, okay, here, go in. And right now, all I see is dead sideways market. I don't see anything that says to me, uh, Chris, let's get in there. You know, I just, I don't see it. I'm not feeling it. Now here, here would be a market that looks good. looks like fun. looks like something's happening. All right. The USD JPY getting a nice impulse to the upside. You know, why not? Why not look at that market? All right. First off, I would keep the risk down here. And this market, you want to be a little bit aggressive? Buy the market in here. Okay? Keep a risk down here. Buy the market in here. This is the USDJPY. It's moving. It's excited. And where's your risk? Your risk is on a 30-minute chart. It's down here, you know, maybe 30 pips away. And you want to play this market? Not a problem. Not a problem buying it. It's a moving market. It has life. Why not? Where would you where would you target? You have one target here, and you have one target here. All right. So if you look at your charts, you can see that upside 13, 113.50, 113.90, and those are upside zones. I would keep a 112.92 risk on the USD JPY. I think the buy side is a good place to be in on that. Nothing wrong with that right now. I'm having some water. Alkaline water. 
There's a whole movement with that alkaline stuff, so I got into it. But it's thing called life ionizers. It's really good. But I like I like how that moves. When you see impulse like that, any retracement should continue uh, to have more impulse to the upside. Unfortunately, we're not going to sit and watch every tick on this, but it's an idea. And why not? All right, why not take a little play out of the market? All right, so pull back. Look at the buy side. I like that. Uh, let's see. NZD, USD, New Zealand dollar. All right, let me see here. What do we got? New Zealand dollar, I like uh, this market to the buy side, keeping a 0.675 risk. So I would look at the smaller time frames today uh, over the next several hours and see if you set up a buy, a buy opportunity anywhere in there. Let's take a look at the smaller time frame. Market opened and has been traveling up. Nothing wrong with keeping a risk point down here. Nothing wrong with doing that and buying any kind of pullback here. Why not? All right, NZD USD is moving, it's excited. All right, nothing wrong with that. I'm good with that. All right, let's see how this market wants to act. All right, and anything you do, look, there's risk in trading. No matter what you do, there's risk. And if you don't take risk, you're not gonna win either. So you do have to have, take some risk when you're in the markets. And if it's not something you're comfortable with, do it on demo, who cares? All right, I like, I like the NZD USD. I like uh, how this is holding this value area down here. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me a little test my, uh, ask my program what's happening. A nice, a nice group here tonight. There's thousands of us. Nice, 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 nice. So let's see. That looked good. The US, uh, USDJPY looks good. Now, another thing I want you to note, when you have such a strong impulse, don't expect that big fancy retracement. I know a lot of people will be like, wow, look for the 38% retracement. You know, a lot of times you're not gonna get that. You're, you're not gonna get that pretty retracement. You know, unfortunately, if you don't get it, that means the market's really strong, obviously, right? And I'll tell you, it's been uh, interesting traveling all over the world. Just uh, crazy. But I miss doing this. I miss being with the guys, with the family. I heard uh, Picasso, Picasso did a killer job last week. Thank you, Picasso. Freaking awesome. So, in the crypt, in um, in the forex markets, I'm seeing the USDJPY as one market. I'm seeing the NZD as another market. Uh, I didn't see much in the AUD. I didn't see much in the GBPUSD. The euro. I think we got ourselves a bigger time frame play there. I know we're going through stuff really quick tonight. Uh, I'm not going to do any teaching, quite honestly, guys and girls. I'll do this. I'm just going to go to sleep. I'm just going to go take a shower or something. Just hit the bed. I went and had a nice meal with my attorney who's um, helping us do something pretty amazing. And I'll get into that tonight. I got a surprise. So let's take a look at the cryptocurrency market. Here we go. Okay, what do we got there? Bitcoin. Dead on arrival. Coins like I'm wanted, dead or alive. The whole world is um, looking at the cryptocurrency markets, the Bitcoin markets. And so everybody was watching this, okay? I'm going to teach everybody something. Everybody was watching this. You know, if it broke there, I'm getting out, you know. I'm getting out. If it holds here, you know, it can go down wherever. And the whole world is hoping 
the cryptocurrency world, hoping, right? Watching it as it came into the equilibrium level that we talked about. And let me see if I can fix this. How do I get it? Oh, here it goes. Reset. Here it goes. So uh, what now needs to happen is this market broke from a sideways line. See that? That's called a sideways line. Remember we said don't do anything with that even a few weeks ago? Wait. So the market broke down. Last thing you want to do is be stuck, right? So right now, any bounce uh, should have resistance. Any bounce should, should be limited. And we should test down again, either here or here. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but that's, you know, an idea. Um, what's happening is I invest myself long-term for Bitcoin. I'm continuously buying every day, like a little bit every day. So no matter where it is, I'm always buying it. But on a trading perspective, okay, I'm not looking at investing. I'm looking at a trading perspective, all right? I would wait for this market to bounce. We'll take this high to this low. All right. And I would look at something in here, maybe 38 to 50 percent bounce. All right. 48 to 5,000. And maybe you get yourself a short sale out of it. All right. So if you trade it off your chart, your, um, your uh, Forex platforms, FX Choice, or whatever platforms they got out there. Um, there's another one. I, I forgot the name of it, but I buy the, um, I'm always buying the, the actual cash, uh, Bitcoin. I'm not uh, physically trading it. I'm just investing. So I have no bias either way, quite honestly, I'm just giving my analysis. Um, you had a, such a large breakdown in the market. The first bounce should be limited. We'd be lucky to even get back up here right away, but let's see. Right, you may even only get this far, but the market did have a nice little wave down, and any push, 4,800, 5,200, it's an area you want to sell it. You could short sell it. Now, if you're an investor, different investor, all this coming down, all this area, is where right here, people got scared. All right, people got scared. They said, "That's it, pull the plug." Why? Christmas is coming. New Year's is coming. People feel that, oh man, if it breaks this level, I got to get out. I'm going to lose all my money, right? That's the mentality. And being a longer-term investor, you have to know to sit back and these become discounts, all right? It's a discount. You think about it. The financial markets are the only place in the world where people run away from cheap prices, right? Can you imagine Louis Vuitton shoes that were 6500 are now, you know, 4,000. You know, I'm buying, right? So you have to, if the financial markets are weird. People run when the markets go down. They get scared. But you as a professional, you as a long-term professional, you have to spot these things in the market, these depressing points, and say, you know what? The regular guy doesn't want it. I'll take it, you know? And you have to look at it as a, as a discount. In a trading aspect, separate, yeah, any kind of bounce should be limited to sell it. But on a longer term basis, the market's down. And don't be that guy later on. I mean, watch it. But don't be that guy later on when this market is a lot higher that you say, man, I could have bought it at 3500 You know, I really, uh, I've been investing in trading for so long. I don't look at this as, a, as something bad. Now, I want to show you something. Let's take a weekly chart of this, right? Watch this. NDX, right? Let's take a look at the indexes. All right, let's take a look at a monthly chart of NASDAQ. Doesn't that look the same? Literally, doesn't that look the same as Bitcoin? I'm not sure if I can even overlay them. But doesn't that look the same of what we just looked at? Oops. Oops. Some other company. I was checking them out. All right. Try this again. Copy.
Okay, try this again. So NASDAQ monthly here, and then let's look at Bitcoin. I want you to compare this weekly. Let me just take this one and make this a weekly. All right, everybody. Let's look at this together. So right here, the market looks like it's death. It looks like it's dying. It looks like it's over. All right. And in the 90s, okay, in the 90s, I was trading. I was trading all of this, right? I was trading since here, 1994. So I saw this already with the internet stocks. Everybody got, got pumped. Everybody talked about trading. My doorman was knocking on my door. Chris, I got an idea. I got a tip. I got this. And I'm like, okay. Then all of a sudden, the market crashed one day. All right? It looks like it, right? Think about it. It looks exactly the same. So a monthly chart of NASDAQ and a weekly chart of uh, Bitcoin, it's literally almost the same thing. All right? So... Back in this time, my doorman, I mean, my valet, everybody, you know, the car wash guy, everybody was a trader. Then they died and everybody disappeared. And it took time to heal. It took time to heal. It took time for people to accept technology. It took time for people to accept internet, technology. You know, think about it. This was right here. These were the, the days where we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have all that stuff. It was all new, right? Search engines and all that stuff. But everybody got out. And over time, it became normally and accepted. Normal and accepted. Now look at it. The internet runs the world. You look in here, the same thing happened, right? And now... Over a period of time, all right, this may happen until blockchain becomes accepted. So on a short-term basis, trading is one thing. But on a long-term basis, I really want you to consider this to be the same thing as NASDAQ. Uh, how can I fix that? Somebody help me reset the chart. There it goes. Think of NASDAQ, all right? It's the same, same model, all right? Things have to be accepted. Everybody got in. Everybody was telling me about Bitcoin. I'm on the airplane. I'm in restaurants. And all of a sudden, everybody disappeared. And where everybody else disappeared, I was buying, all right? I was trading and buying. I still am. And the same thing happened here. I was trading and buying, all right? So you have to have some kind of vision and, you know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. For me, it's twice in a lifetime. All right? So I just want to kind of give you a heads up on what I see in these markets. Now, the cool thing is, the cool thing is, I'm going to be bringing uh, mining into the markets. Uh, I partnered up with the facility. I'm basically taking over a company. All right? If you really want to be real about it. Uh, a company that didn't have enough funding, I put a bunch of funding, I'm putting a bunch of funding behind it. And taking over the facility got top, top, I'm talking like nuclear experts over here, the most incredible technology you can think of. The most amazing technology, I'm talking facilities like houses, not houses, buildings, six, 7,000 feet, buildings upon buildings. So I'm looking at that as the future. I'm saying to myself, you know what? I markets live. We need mining. And I've talked to different companies, different companies, and I've been working with one for a bit and finally made some decisions. Now, we had sent an email out a couple weeks ago after Bitcoin crashed, and I want to take a look and see what's going on. And I'm going to look at mining a bit differently. I'm going to look at it a bit differently as we want to not buy, right? Because some people don't have that kind of capital. And also, I really want you to think, if you buy here, you're going to go through an elongated period of time. And the last thing you need is to tie up your working capital, right, if you don't have it. 
But if you're mining, every time the market moves, you make your money or collecting coin. And when I look at something like um, Ethereum, right, for example, I look at Ethereum. I was uh, looking at this the other day. What we have coming, guys and girls, I'm telling you, I've been working my butt off, and um, I'm going to bring the best of the best to our family here. Make no mistake about it. I'm looking at a January launch, all right? I just want to let the holidays get out of the way. But if we look at something like Ethereum, imagine we're mining down here, not buying it. Look, if you're not a big long-term investor, the last thing you want to do is buy it 100 and your money gets stuck down here for a long time and you can't get it out. I would rather be having my machines even if it goes down, mining for me, earning coin everywhere here, and eventually have that retracement up in the market. That's a normal retracement. Markets go down, markets come up, all right? So where you look at it now where it's depressed, man, if I had one coin, just one Ethereum coin, so $100, $100 $120, bucks, just a simple retracement in the market, I'm looking at 400, 500 times on the money. So that's how uh, we're going to be educating everybody. I'm going to be bringing mining to the table, our own in-house technology. Um, I, I literally have been uh, making this my priority. I want IML to be in front of the blockchain for the future. Um, we got so many ideas, so many things we could bring to the table for everybody. Uh, let me just um, get on screen here. Um, we have so much that I want to bring to the table, and I'll be naive to stay in one lane. All right, I want to diversify the company, bringing in mining, I think is a great thing, but how we do it is important. How we educate. I'm talking, we have it, we're having it set up where your, your, your system is connected to the blockchain on your phone. You can trade or buy different coins on your system. We have alerts, we have it where news feeds are coming in. It is the most, what we call, quote unquote, gangster platform in the world. And um, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, been at the right time at the right place uh, with the right people. So we're working on that over the next several weeks and I'm looking for a launch in January. And you could pass the word, it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be nice and we're gonna be able to teach you. On top of that, again, we're gonna be teaching you how to, um, I say stick with swipe coin, stick with IML TV, all the educators stick with swipe trades, the web analyzer, all the products we have. Uh, Eric Garrison is a mega trader. He's brought the bounce back strategy to the web analyzer. Him and I just spent a couple days doing some traveling. Uh, we're actually gonna be in California in a few days together. But uh, use all of our products, but we definitely have some big things coming. We have advancements in some of our existing products. And I believe they made an announcement tonight on the Millionaire Mindset about a promo. I have to um, check into that. We'll check our emails when they come in. But other than that, uh, just be careful over these next uh, few weeks. The market's going to go into a chop mode. Big money people are not going to be committing money. They're going to be pulling it out. I think, again, a lot of these, um, what you're seeing in the... Um, Cryptocurrency markets are people just scared. Just scared money doesn't make money. They're running away. They want to get their money before they lose it for Christmas. But you're smarter than that, okay? Let's, uh, let's nickel and dime the markets over the next few weeks. Plenty, plenty, plenty of time for all of 2019. One of the things I do suggest you do is start writing up your business plan. Start writing up your business plan. Start making your plan of exactly what your plans are for trading, all right? So I'll get that next week, the week after. I'll start getting into that on how you develop your business plan, your business model going into 2019. Uh, I'm not doing a motivational talk tonight, quite honestly. I've just been traveling a lot, and I'm glad to be home, and I'm feeling good. I shaved, and, um, and that's about it. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, hold on a second. Let me just find it, okay? 
give me uh give me a second. Uh, let me just see here. Here we go. So uh, Instagram, if you want to just follow, I do some stuff on Instagram. I put my posts. Uh, nothing really, you know, just me having fun living my life. So Chris Terry Official, you can follow me there. And um, I always put when I'm doing the night owls, you'll be updated. But other than that, um, really take the time of December to uh, invest into you. Invest into your uh, future, invest into knowledge, invest into learning books, invest into staying away from negative people. Uh, and that's about it. Have yourself an amazing, amazing evening. I'll catch you next Sunday. And um, 